Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. If you've been here before, I'm so glad you're back again. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Hit that subscribe button and then tap the little bell so you'll be notified when I put up another video. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Today I'm going to go way, way back in my recipe drawer. Um, <clears throat> as a new bride, I cooked because I, I like to cook all my life. I started cooking when I was nine years old. I made my first pound cake from scratch. But mother worked and uh, dad worked, of course, but I'd come in from school and cook supper. So when we married, it would, I didn't have a problem cooking our meals. I already knew how to cook. And I started making homemade bread. There was a lady in our church, Sister Perry, and she made bread and shared her recipe with me. And I haven't made this in years and years, but I was looking through the recipe drawer and I thought, well, my goodness, I'm going to make some of that homemade white bread. It makes two loaves and it's not hard. So we're going to get over to the mixer and get it mixed up, let it start rising, and um, get it finished where I can upload this video because y'all might want to make some. So let's get over to the KitchenAid mixer. I'm going to use it instead of the Bosch and mix it up and get it to rising. Before I start the bread, I wanted to um, give a little shout out to some friends from my channel that have made my day several days. I went to the post office a few days ago and I had the sweetest card from Maria. And um, this is actually a picture from her deck. Isn't that pretty? And she was wanting to order an apron. But I loved her card and the idea that she made her own cards making photos around her own home. And she ordered her apron, paid for her apron, and should have it by now because I got it in the mail. And then I had a beautiful thinking of you and caring about you card. It means a whole lot when people care enough nowadays to put something in the, in the mail. Everything is done online. You can't touch it. You can't go back and reread it and get as much joy out of it. Now, I love my emails that I get from y'all. Don't take me wrong. But I appreciate it when people take the time to mail me a card. And this card is from Jane Buck, and it meant the world to me. Thank you so much for thinking about me. And then I went and I had a surprise package in the mail. And isn't that the cutest card, a sunflower with sunshade zone? And this was from Roxy, and she lives in Tampa, Florida. And she took time to crochet or knit, I'm assuming it's crochet, a pot scrubber, a mug mat, uh, I think this is a, this may be a dishcloth because it's double thickness. I hadn't used it yet. I've been saving it. And then look at these little hot mats that she made me. And they're in the red and black for my kitchen. Thank you, Roxy, for taking your time to make something for me. I'm going to tell you what, I am going to thoroughly enjoy using them. But I've been saving them until I did this uh, shout out where people could see them looking brand new and pretty. And then... I got uh, a surprise package from Janet James, and she had gone, she said, to Big Lots and found these wonderful little thin ginger snap cookies. Look how thin they are. And they're delicious. Big Lots had them. She said, I bought one for me and one for you. And yes, Jane, you could crush those up and add some butter to them for the consistency and make a crust out of them. But I'm not going to do that because I'm enjoying them one or two at a time with my tea. Um, I had mentioned the ones that I got at the Dollar, store, Dollar Tree, and they are very good. But these are a higher quality than those. These are very good cookies. Thank you so much for thinking about me and mailing me some cookies. So I think that I took care of everything that I've got right here so far. And I'll just watch the mail for some more prizes and cards because I like prizes and cards. Okay, we better get over there and make some bread. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, I've got a fourth of a cup. Get over here where you can see a fourth of a cup of warm water, which is just like a baby's bottle or a baby's bath. And into that, I'm going to put equal to one package of instant yeast. And I have this cool little spoon that I got from king author that measures what would be in one of those packets if i didn't buy my yeast in bulk and keep it uh, i'm going to put my yeast in the warm water and let it dissolve uh, 
a little bit. I'm just stirring it around. Y'all can't see what I'm doing, can you? Because I got it over here. I'm just going to stir it around in there so it'll dissolve good. This, this bread is different from some of the white breads that I make because this has egg in it. And also, I'm just going to tell y'all, when I'm making just regular bread like this, I uh, mix my flour, half bread flour and half all-purpose. And I have a big canister up in the cabinet and that's how it's mixed in there is half and half so that's what I'm using today is half bread but you could do it with all of either one I'm trying to get that yeast to dissolve instead of clump and because it's instant I could have just went ahead and put it in my um, dry ingredients and mixed it all together like that but I'm gonna do it like my little recipe told me to do it okay I've got that going now the first thing we're gonna do is cream one stick of butter and a third of a cup of sugar My butter's real good and soft, so I'm going to add my third of a cup of sugar and cream that. And then we're going to need to add three eggs. My little old ladies are doing better. I am planning to go and try to buy me three more, I mean six more hens, uh, just to reinforce what I've got. Okay, and we will blend our eggs in, of course, with the sugar and butter. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a teaspoon of salt into my four cups of flour. I put it on the top here because I'm going to add that in here. A little at a time. And I have one cup of milk warming in the microwave. You want it to be warm. Check my milk, see if it's warm enough. My milk is warm enough, so I'm going to add a little of it. my flour and I'm going to add my yeast see it's bubbled up Makes a very sticky dough, loose dough. I'm 
and I'm just gonna beat it just a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do is just clean my beater and uh, cover my bowl and let it rise for one hour. Then we're going to uh, deflate it and put it into two loaf pans and um, let it rise another hour or until it's double. Now I've got, my house is 70 something degrees, close to 80, but I've got the light on in my oven and that makes a perfect environment for raising bread. So I'm going to put this in the oven and maybe it'll, it might rise a little bit quicker. We'll see. Okay. I'm just going to kind of get this all scooped together here. Down in the pan. And you don't have to do hardly any kneading on this because it's too soft and it will rise and it will make the bread that we want it to make. So I'm just going to let that rest right there. See if I can sit this in my oven. I may have to lower my shelf. But I'll get it in there and get it to rise in and I'll bring y'all back when it has doubled. Okay, the bread has more than doubled. So I'm fixing to deflate it and get it in my pans and let it rise for another hour. Okay, I put a little bit of flour on the board. And I'm going to get my dough out of here and on my board. And like I said, it's a very soft and sticky dough. I'll tell y'all again, if I've told you before, but when you're messing with yeast dough, be careful that you scrape it all out, especially if you're on a septic system. Do not let that dough go down your drain because it'll stop the dough. Troy had to take that thing loose that's at the crook underneath the sink, and it had a big old dough ball in it. I'm just going to put a little flour on here so that I can work this out and half it. You don't have to really knead it. It's too soft for that. I'm just going to try to cut it in half. And then I'm going to try to just kind of roll it into a Yeah. I'm not making a traditional loaf out of it. I'm just getting it where I can press it down in the pan and let it rise. One. I'm just kind of folding it in on itself. And I'm going to put it in my pan and roll it around in the olive oil that's in there. And put it back in the warm oven with the light on. That's the reason it's warm. I'm going to stick it back in the oven and let it rise another hour and then we'll bake it. Okay, I got my bread out of the oven. See, it's up above the top of the pan. And I'm letting my oven heat and then I'll bake it and I'll bring y'all back when it's done. But I'm really proud of it. I got the bread out of the oven. 
and I let it rise a little bit too long and see how it kind of sunk down in the top but let me tell you something the bread is absolutely scrumptious see there and I cut me a piece and I've got me some Kerrygold butter on it and it is delicious well what happened I was outside tending the kittens and I let it rise a little bit too long and it sunk a little bit in the middle but oh my word it's delicious it is soft almost has the texture of bottle, light bread not whole wheat just white bread I remember now why I used to be so proud when I made this because it was delicious and I was 19 years old and a new bride and most girls my age didn't know how to make bread so I was very proud of myself in my loaves of bread so y'all need to try this recipe um, and even if it falls in the middle like mine did it's not gummy on the inside it's still good wonderful textured bread now I hope you're using your gift today wisely yesterday's history Today's the present, it's a gift. And tomorrow is um, a mystery. So make today count. Fix your family a good meal and gather them around the table. Make some memories. And oh yeah, be buying a little bit of extra stuff for your pantry, because you might need it. Instead of one can of fruit cocktail, buy two. Instead of one can of green beans, buy two. And always put some back, and pretty soon you'll have a pretty good little stash in case something happens. Now our weatherman around here is saying that around the 13th we may have a, a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. That's kind of nerve-wracking. Sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong, so we're just waiting, but I'm making sure I've got everything I need and some extra bottled water and stuff just in case so I won't have to try to go to a grocery store that the shelves are empty at the last minute. I hope y'all will come back in a day or two. I'm going to do my uh, haul from the LDS uh, Distribution Center. I got some good stuff already put up in cans and sealed that will last 30 years and the price is awesome. So I'm going to be showing you that haul. I've got a couple of more really good recipes coming up. Then I'm going to talk to you about how to stock your pantry. So we got some good stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. Stay tuned. Come back right here. And we'll talk and we'll eat and we'll... Um, cook and we'll garden and we'll talk about whatever. The good Lord bless and keep y'all and I'll see you again real soon, I hope.